didn't know you were coming by today. Great! I'm Dr. Ryan Bober from Ask Your MD, and today we need to talk about COVID antibodies. It's the big question, am I immune? Can I see my friends? Can I go travel? Can I go see my elderly grandparents? The answer to all these questions may lie in antibodies, but let's dive in and see what we know so far. What are antibodies? Antibodies are special proteins that are made in your blood in response to an infection, such as a virus. So when a virus enters your body, like the coronavirus, it's broken up into a bunch of small pieces, and then antibodies will recognize one specific particle, and there's lots of antibodies that will be developed, and each one only sees one small piece of this. Almost like your parents only reading one word of a text at a time on their flip phone in a very large font. But if they see that heart emoji, they light up. And this is the same thing that your immune system does. When it's re-exposed to the same particle or fragment of a virus, it starts flagging an alarm to your body, and it starts producing many, many cells that target the virus quickly, efficiently, and it effectively helps remove the virus and the infection. And if this doesn't work, then the infection can take over. You're going to get an antibody test, doing it three weeks or later after you've had symptoms is more likely to be a reliable test result than doing it a couple days after or if you just got exposed. Remember, it's not a test for a new or active infection. This is a test to see if you've been exposed and that's all it tells you. It doesn't tell you how long the immunity is going to last and it doesn't tell you if you're actively shedding the virus to somebody else. All we know is if you have a positive antibody test your body has been exposed, has created some memory cells, these antibodies, memory proteins, and that it recognizes this foreign particle. So let's dive a little bit deeper so we can understand the context. We can begin to apply some other principles to really understand what your specific test result means for you. But in order to do that, we have to know the test characteristics. And what I mean by that is we have to understand the sensitivity and the specificity of this test. And now I know what you're thinking. You want to know how emotional your test is. But unfortunately, I can't tell you that, and neither can the FDA, because sensitivity is something different. This is telling us how likely is your test to detect an antibody when we know that it's present. For example, if we have 100 people that had a confirmed infection with a nose swab, and we test those people with a test that we designed looking for an infection. And out of the 100 people, only 50 of those tested positive, even though we knew 100 of them had the infection. That test is only 50% sensitive. That's not too great. But what if we had the test that detected 99 out of every 100 people with an infection? Then we have a 99% sensitivity for the test. That's much better. In the other way we can look at it is only one out of 100 people with an infection will not have a positive test. We call this a false negative. So that's a much more reliable statistical test when we can feel more comfort in knowing that we are less likely to miss an infectious case if we use this specific test. So in addition to sensitivity, we have specificity. Specificity answers the question, if I do not have the disease, how likely is it that a test will give me a negative result? In other words, let's say you had 100 people that were living in, in, in Antarctica and had absolutely no other person exposure, and then you knew for certain that they did not have exposure to the coronavirus that we're concerned about. If you gave them a test and 50% of these people came back positive, even though we knew that they had no exposure, then that test is only 50% specific because something else was driving the test to become positive. That's not a great test, but let's say that 99 out of the 100 people who had no exposure tested negative. Well, then that's a 99% specific test and only one person is falsely positive. So that's much better and much more reliable and specificity can undermine the utility of a test. In the same way that if you're using Google and you search for George Clooney and you got a picture of me, sure, we might have a lot of similar features, but only one of us pretends to be a doctor on TV. 
This information is not always easy to find, but I'll post the link below with the sensitivity and specificity characteristics for all the FDA approved tests that are publicly available. Okay, I know the big question is, am I immune? And can you get out to go travel, to go see your friends across the world? Well, from what we know right now in preliminary studies, there's a suggestion that there is some level of immunity that comes with a natural infection, and also with getting antibodies from someone who's already recovered from the infection, if you're sick. These are early studies, they're not very long in duration, and there's small numbers of people that have been in those studies. So there's still lots of unanswered questions. We don't know if everyone who has the infection develops antibodies. We don't know how many antibodies you need in order to produce a protective level of immunity. Unfortunately, we don't know that if you get reinfected, are you able to spread the virus to somebody else even though you yourself might be protected. And these test characteristics that I described, the sensitivity and specificity, those are for people with symptoms. So if you never had symptoms, your test characteristics are likely lower, meaning the test will not be as sensitive and maybe not be as specific. From a public health perspective, it's really important in the sense that we eventually will have this data and then we can look back at your specific test result and say, let's take this portion of the population that has antibodies and say that they are relatively safer than those who don't have any antibodies at moving forward into the workforce in higher risk areas, whether it's on a trading floor or at a newspaper room or any, whatever your job is, if you have a much closer proximity of exposure to other people and you have a positive antibody test, there likely will be a role in the future that you are going to be one of the first people to go back to that job safely. And this is the principle behind a vaccine. If we get enough people with some protective antibody response, then it can protect the people who are unable to get the vaccine. Okay, now that you have a PhD in both statistics and in immunology, we can really begin to understand the power of a test and what it means for you. Because remember, a test is a diagnostic tool that we use in the context of someone's entire picture. So we can't ignore how prevalent is the disease in a community, meaning how many cases are around you and how often are you getting exposure to the coronavirus? Have you had any symptoms yourself? Are you, are you spending time with a family member or living in the same room as a family member who has a confirmed infection? Because this tells us the chance going into a test of how likely you are to have a certain result. Meaning, if you've been in the middle of nowhere and you haven't had any exposure and you get a test that comes back positive, we are less likely to believe the result of that test than if you were in New York City in April and you had fever, you couldn't smell, you had a cough, you had body aches, you had chills, and everyone around you had a, a positive infection. If you have an antibody test that's available to you, interpret it in the context with your doctor of your specific illness, how common the virus is in your specific area, and how much time you spend around somebody with a virus, and also your immune status. And with this information, coupled with your knowledge of antibodies and the power of sensitivity and specificity, you can really make an informed, understanding decision about what your result means for you and what you can do going forward. Alright, so we made it through another COVID-19 video. I hope this was fun. I hope that you learned something useful and that you feel empowered to take this information and apply it in your own way with the help of your doctor or your healthcare provider so that you can really make an informed decision on what your result means for you. So if any of this was helpful, please subscribe below. Send me a message. I'm not exactly flooded with, with emails about responses about what people want to hear about. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep making videos on whatever I want. So if there's something you want to know about, let me know. Uh, email me at rbobermd at gmail.com, and I'll see you next video.